I am Pastor April Hall from the Battleground Community United Methodist Church. Please enjoy this exclusive video on our YouTube channel. God is all mercy and grace, not quick to anger, is rich in love. God is good to one and all. Everything he does is soaked through with grace. God gives a hand to those down on their luck, gives a fresh start to those ready to quit. All eyes are on you, expectant. You give them their meals on time, generous to a fault, you lavish your favor on all creatures. Everything God does is right. The trademark on all his works is love. God is there, listening for all who pray, for all who pray and mean it. He does what's best for those who fear him. He hears them call out and saves them. God sticks by all who love him, but it's all over for those who don't. My mouth is filled with God's praise. Let everything living bless him, bless his holy name from now to eternity. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay. Thank the Lord that he is slow to anger. Amen. Amen. Calling for Barak. I'm going to teach you guys some Hebrew and Greek while I'm around. Praise, calling for praise. As adopted techna, as children of God, we move into Psalm 145 today. And this is a psalm of Barak. It's a psalm of praise. I learned that in the English language, we use more than one word for praise. Praise encompasses the more exuberant types of ministries that we do with the Lord. But did you know that each time you read the word praise in the Bible, it could mean any different thing, but there are seven different types of praise. Now, we will not go into those today, but each word, each seven words for praise means action. So if you go home with one thing today, praise is an action. This is a game changer, I think. We always think of praise of singing or praying or hooping in our car, as some people do. But it's an action. It's more than just that. For the worshiper, Barak means physical act of kneeling like you would before a king with your head bowed down to express gratitude, and submission, reverence, and humility. So bowing down before God. In praise, we lower ourselves to lift God higher. This psalm is the very last psalm written by King David. It is a psalm that is known as a Davidic Psalter collection. That's all the psalms that David wrote. It's a Psalter collection. You know what? I think this is the most exciting Barak, most exciting praise psalm that is in our Bible. In verses 3 through 4, David shouts out, God is magnificent. He can never be praised enough. You know, there are really no boundaries to God's greatness. There are generations and generations and generations that just stand in awe of the presence of what God does, his work. And each one of the stories you tell shares and shows his mighty works. Verses 7 and 8 says, the fame of your goodness spreads all across the country. And we all know that all across this world, people praise God in different ways. Your righteousness is on everyone's lips, and God is all mercy and grace. I feel like David is really praising God with everything he's got. But then, 
God is not quick to anger. He is rich in love. The mighty of his works. Because he's good to everyone. Everyone. David said that the beautiful care of God was pressed upon all that he did. And so all creation is filled with his goodness. It's pressed upon everything he did. All creation is a show of his mighty goodness, his greatness. But you know what? We are also God's creation, amen? It is impressed upon us. We are made in God's image, and we're also made in the image of the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. So who's included in the word everyone? Everybody, every person on this earth is God's child. Everyone. Y'all are included. Y'all are included, you're included, and you're included, and all those in the back and online, all of us are included in God's goodness. We are his creation. Isn't that mind-blowing? Because we tend to forget that he created everybody. We tend to forget that he created them in their image, the power of three. But he created us all. Praise God. So David repeats that idea again. Everything God does for for creation is done for us as well. And guess what? It is soaked in grace. I want to say that again. It is soaked in grace. Because God is good. And God calls for a response from us. David says that the response that we should give back is praising the Lord this morning. Y'all should be happy looking. This is good news. David says that we need to bring a humble, a reverent praise to God because we should acknowledge the creator. All the beautiful things that he has done around us. Our creator loves his creation this morning. We are recipients of this grace. And so, as recipients, we should be messengers of this grace to everyone that we meet. The Psalm of David praises God's character because he is one that does works. He is one that performs deeds. He fulfills the greatness of his reign. Even Jesus understood that his father, God, deserved his praise. You know, me and Ezra was talking this week, and he said something that kind of jogged my memory. If we do not praise God, the mountains and the rocks will cry out to him. And you know, I didn't really understand this. I'm not a new Christian. I'm still kind of the growing. I didn't understand it. But this is important because we are creation, and God calls us to praise him. And if we don't praise him, the rocks, the mountains, everything else will cry out to him. And since we are created in his image, we should be praising him on a daily basis. In Psalm 148, there are numerous examples of created things that praise their creator. The sun, the moon, Heavens, the stars, water, sky, animals, and people. So everything that God created was for the pleasure of our sovereign Lord. So I want to provide just a little bit of information of why I call this calling for praise. Does anybody remember King David? King David was a man after God's own heart. He was the son of Jesse per the line of Ruth. Ruth was an ancestor of David's and the Davidic line. And Ruth says that the Lord will repay you for what you have done. And under God's wings, you should take refuge. And so this verse 
rewards Ruth, which is David's great-grandmother. But the beautiful thing about Ruth is she was a Gentile living in a Jewish world. Her future family would bring the greatest family ever in the family line through history. The extended blessings of looking back in time to Ruth's amazing family tree in 1000 BCE means before the common era. And it looks forward to the everlasting and the universal covenant that he will have with David's son. So then 2 Samuel brings in the beginning of a new monarchy. With King David's anointing, he began at the time that Saul's reign ended. Stay with me just a minute. Here, the Philistines killed Saul's two sons, and his reign ended. But the history of one dynasty that ended with his sons now moves into a lineage of kings all over Judah. And guess who gets that lineage? David. He hears about the the death of Saul and he mourns him, showing a personal yet emotional side of this new king. And as he mourned them, they fell to the ground and tore off their clothes because they were so upset about this death. And I feel like here, this is where the journey changes for King David. He is directed to move to Hebron with his family. And here he becomes king, a new chosen hero. And he's chosen by God. And suddenly, this new father finds himself with a sick kid. And here David gets on his knees and he calls for help from the Lord to restore his son's death. A plea that returned empty-handed for David. As his son dies, he mourns a loss again. So this is a picture of King David, the one that's writing this praise psalm. The one who has went in many different directions, fighting many different battles. Lots of loss. But God humbles the proud, and he raises the humbled spirit. He has this son named Solomon, and his name means peace. It's hinting to the future role of his king, the one in David's lineage. Peaceful is who Jesus Christ is. As David sings praises for the Lord, during all these tumultuous times, God ordered a covenant between him and David to be true. So I want to ask you today, are you praising God? Are you really praising God for all the things that he's done for you, for the good, the bad, and everything in between today? Because I don't know about you, but King David had an exceptionally long journey that he had to travel through. And it was not easy. But David always repented for the sins that he created. He always praised God all through the Bible. So here again, David fights with the Amorites and the Syrians. They're trying to take Israel's control. The devil is standing against Israel, and he's starting to tempt David. And God wasn't pleased with the Lord or with David. But David builds an altar to God. It seems to me that even the best of God's workers must withstand hard tests. So David calls out, praising God. He calls out to rescue his people, and God's love just keeps flowing through his veins. And it's a blessing from God. And guess what? We are part of David's lineage. We are a part of that. I'm here to tell you that we are the house of David. We come from a huge, long lineage of something that is so beautiful. 
So we should be praising God. We should be doing it just like David. David wasn't perfect. David wasn't the greatest man on earth, but David was a man after God's own heart. And guess where Jesus comes from? David's lineage. It will be carried on from the Old Testament through the New Testament. It will be carried on forever. The psalmist praises the Lord who captivates the listener throughout this psalm. The God kept his promises to him and his future descendants. Amen? If King David can praise the Lord after everything that he's went through, the troubles that he made, surely we can praise God with all the sins and all the health and healing that we've gone through. Here David calls for our praise, but even more, God calls for our praise. God is worthy of praise. Psalm 145, 20 says, The Lord preserves all, all who love him. So we need to praise God every day. To praise God shows our love, our mercy, and our grace for others. To praise God even with our insufficiencies of perfections. Therefore, proving our need for his love. And throughout this psalm, David talks about how much we should praise God for who he is and what he's done. He says, my mouth is filled with God's praise. Let every living thing bless him. Bless his name for all eternity. Amen? God's calling for our praises today. So I want to know, will you? 